Hello lovelies and welcome to the I can't believe it's July either edition of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. Welcome. Hope everyone's okay. Thank you for being here. Whether you're new or returning, it's great to have you here. This is a podcast about knitting, crochet, yarn, spinning, general yarny, crafty stuff recorded on the south coast of the UK. My name's Leslie. I'm your host. Hello. Sorry, I don't know why I did that. And <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you for all the comments and thoughts on previous episodes. It's always lovely to hear from you. I record throughout the month and then put the pieces together and post them on the last weekend of the month. I also do a weekly vlog, just kind of usually under 10 minutes, just kind of what I've been up to, which isn't that exciting, but people seem to like it. So thank you. Thank you for being interested. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that goes up every Friday. Uh, there's a make-along running at the moment. This is the craft for someone else make-along and it's as simple as it sounds so anything that you're making anything yarny so knitting crochet you could be spinning some yarn for, to give us a gift um yeah anything yarny that you're making for someone else it's that simple that started i think in april it runs till the end of october the next draw for prizes will be at the end of september there are two threads on ravelry one is a chatter thread and by all means, put your finished objects on there as well so that you're entered into the chatter thread drawer. And also people can ask questions, comment, what have you, based on your, your finished object. There's also a no chatter finished object thread. Two prizes. On the chatter thread, it'll be a pattern prize. On the finished object thread, it'll be a physical prize. So yarn or something of that nature. And I will draw that at the end of September. If you're unable to use Ravelry, please email me at notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com and I will enter your post into the Ravelry threads. So hopefully that makes sense. Yes, yeah, so at the end of October, there'll be a, a draw based on the whole period. The sa September draw will be from end of June to end of September. It makes sense to me. Hopefully it does to you as well. Uh, it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast because I have lots of yarn. But I rarely have enough to make a whole garment in the same yarn because I tend to buy things because they're pretty. So I buy a skein here, a skein there rather than a sweater quantity as a general rule. And so I like to put them together. I will talk about this cardigan in a moment. But I'm big on stripes and blocks and ways of adding colour and putting things together that wouldn't necessarily be a natural fit but do my best to make them work so so that's kind of the background so let's get on to the fo this cardigan has been on the needles for some time i didn't actually put a project note as to when i started it um when I am checking work on my computer, so I'm reading things aloud to check them, I tend to knit while I'm doing that. So those projects are usually straightforward garter stitch, stocking stitch, something fairly easy. And this was that project. So it's been on the needles for quite a long time. The yarn was initially used, I tried to make a crochet boxy with it. Now these are all lace weight yarns, which I'm using either held double or held treble. Um, they have a lovely drape, which works well for this cardigan, but for the crochet boxy, it felt too drapey. Um, the the tension, the gauge of the crochet that I used was, was fairly soft to start with. So this just felt as though um, it was just too soft and drapey. Um, when making oversized garments I like them big enough to float not so big that I drown and I was definitely drowning in the the crochet boxy so I decided to have a rethink and if in doubt stick to the classics or well, the classics according to one's own what we like <laughs> that was a terrible sentence um previous 
viewers of previous podcasts will know that I am a fan of Nicola Suzanne, who is, I think, a German designer and has a number of patterns which you don't have to swatch for. I know. So quite clever constructions. They normally start, start a bit like a shawl, actually, with just a few stitches at the top. You'll have taken a couple of measurements and the rest works from there. So you, you kind of knit it, measure it as you go. Once you hit the size that you want, then you change things slightly to do the next part of the pattern. Um, this is, I don't know how many of her patterns I've made, but a few. <laughs> Because they are just pick up and go patterns. They're they're very they're very easy to to follow. The actual printed instructions, it's only a couple of pages because the the construction is kind of clever but simple. And that once you've started in the 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 process, you just follow the process and it's it's easy. They're also therefore very adaptable. I mean I've tended to stick with uh stocking stitch and putting stripes in. But you could add cables, add lace, do what you like with the, the fabric of what you're making because you're then working until it's the size that you want to do the next bit. So very adaptable. Um, sounds like I'm sponsored. I'm not. I'm just a fan. <laughs> so. so this is a Nicola Suzanne pattern and this is the Eureka. It's a cardigan. I will put some pictures in here of me wearing it so you can see it full length. Uh, I normally say, oh, I'll take it off and show you, but it's too cold. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, pictures here. I'm sorry, I can't take sensible pictures. I start off okay, but then it all gets a bit silly. You know me, you know that's gonna happen. So it's the Eureka pattern, cardigan, V-neck, worked from the top down and you just do what you like with it basically just keep following the instructions and you'll have the cardigan that you want I made some modifications because they these are patterns that lend themselves to modifications firstly uh, when I was doing the sleeves I realized that they were coming out a little big I tend to like quite close fitting sleeves I don't like flappy I, you know, these sort of bishop sleeves and the bell sleeves and that really not for me just not how I like to wear garments I can understand the aesthetic appeal of them but just for me they would I'd be knocking things all over the place with them basically I'm just clumsy and I have to dress accordingly so so it was getting a little bit um, flu flappy and floofy so what I did was I've actually done some decreases within the ribbing on the cuff as well to bring that in on both sides so I did that um, what else did I do no that's kind of it the neck treatment my personal jewelry is still out on whether I like this or not and I've shown it on the weekly vlog and the jewelry's still out there as well and that's fine you know we, we all have different tastes I think I had underestimated the softness of the drape on this. So I'd done a, a shawl collar, short rows to give it more depth at the back. And um, because this is so soft and drapey, it just all feels a bit floppy, as you can see. So um, the more I wear it, <clears throat> excuse me, the more I wear it, the more I like it, but it may be something that I reached a point where I think, no, actually, I'm I'm not wearing it because I don't like it. You know, if I find it is getting a bit annoying, then I can just unpick the, the neck. It was the last thing to go on. So I can unpick this band and do something else instead. That's easy. So the yarns, we've got all sorts in here. Like I say, they were all lace weights. So I'm going to show them to you as best I can. Um, so we have insane jelly athena which i think is this dark blue i've got a couple of dark blues on here and once the band was off i wasn't sure which was which but i think it's that one we've got fiber spates nef or nef lace in the tropical storm colorway 
which is this variegated one here and with this as I was working I chain plied it so it's very fine yarn I basically made like a big crochet loop and you've got like the big loopy bit and the thread that's attached to the, the ball so it's three plies effectively so you knit with that and then when you get to the end of the loop you just pull another one through and that's how you go on what that can do and what it's done here is sort of intensify the color it's um it's not a long colour change yarn, but it's not like a speckle or anything like that. So I've got these definite stripes of colour, whereas elsewhere it's more variegated when I was working differently with it. So in the end, what I decided to do, as I have a spinning wheel, was to chain ply it on my spinning wheel so that it was just done. And it gave me a chance to practice chain plying on the wheel as well. So, so that's the fibre spates. Then we have Lamington Lass, ever so slightly naughty in the autumn plunder colourway, which is this fabulous plummy purple. It's all a bit gorgeous. Lovely, rich, sort of damsony colour. Uh, Lotus Yarns Silky Cashmere. I'm not sure which one that is. I think that is the other dark blue, actually, because that's a silky yarn. That would make sense. We have Lotus Yarns Tibetan Cloud, which is what I've got on the cuff here and on stripes up the sleeve. Um, so those are the yarns. And then there's this sort of lilac colour, which I've used around the edging. And it's this shade here. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it was a gift uh, a long time ago from a friend. And it was just tied up in a ribbon. I don't know what the yarn is. Um, but it was a, a lace weight yarn so it's gone in here so like I say some of these I used double some of them I used uh, three strands I mean this one for example the Lotus Yarns Tibetan Cloud no not that one the other Lotus Yarns it's described as a fingering but it's not a fingering what I would consider a fingering like a four ply weight the same that you'd use for socks that kind of thing so definitely not that finer than that so I used it double and some of them I used treble so that meant that because I measure my yarn usage in meters it sounds like I've used a lot of yarn because it was 3958 meters which sounds like a huge amount of yarn for a cardigan even for a larger size like mine but it's because of the the doubling and trebling of yarns it is a really nice weight of cardigan um, because it's this soft drapiness there's a lot of merino there's a lot of silk in these yarns so they drape um, and for this time of year where it's just a sunny day but you think oh it's a bit nippy beautiful weight for that really pleased with it because of the nature of the yarns um, very warm but not heavy so I'm, I'm liking that aspect of it and yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. Like I say, the only possible reservation is the collar. Um, I'll see how I get on. The, it's not getting on my nerves in the way I feared it would. But if I find it does, then I'll rework it. That's It's knitting. It can be redone. So, I think that's it for this. Um, yeah, so Nicola, Suzanne, Eureka in assorted lace weight yarns. And a project that's been on the needles for quite some time, but um, is now done and I'm very happy. See you later. Cheers. Hello, lovelies. And here's another in the occasional series, I Make Mistakes So You Don't Have To. And this is a sad tale of lost yarn. Not lost in the post. Not lost on a train. Just lost. To go back to the beginning. You can interrupt the voice prompt and give a command immediately by pressing. I don't know why my car suddenly decided to start talking to me, but there we go. Uh, yes, to go back to the beginning. Um, back in 2008, coincidentally, the same year I did my first ceremony. So the, the beginning of car chats, although I didn't do any then. 
I went to the Knitting and Stitch Show at Alexandra Palace. Now, this is a large venue. It's a big show. I mean, it's not Rhinebeck, but it is a big show. Lots of square footage, lots of different stalls. Um, some really interesting things. They've got student shows, so their pieces. Um, and it has a lot of, or had, I haven't been for a few years, had a lot of commercial dyers, so... Um, a lot of the big yarn companies would have Rowan for example would have a very big um, area there were a few indies and I bought this yarn which I will put a picture in here this is a picture I took at the time or as it's now known this yarn and it's blowing out because I'm sitting in the car but this is Fibre Spates Infinity Silk it is 100% silk, I think, 3,000 metres for 100 grams. So that's how fine it is. And to give you an example of how fine it is, I'm going to hold it against a 3 millimetre crochet hook. And this has been chain plied, so this is three strands to give you that sort of thickness of yarn. So, for some reason, I thought it would be a really good idea to not keep it in a skein, but to cake this yarn up. I don't even know really why I bought it, apart from the fact that it is a very pretty colour. And it is slightly tonal. Again, the light isn't showing it here, but it is slightly tonal. And I think I had this image of... Uh, making a big very lightweight shawl something like that I tend to think big which I'm not saying is a bad thing but it's not always a practical thing so for example I will try something for the first time it doesn't matter if it was like weaving or a new crochet stitch or something like that and then I will plan to make a super king size blanket or something like that yeah, it's because I want to make something useful. I don't just want to make a, an odd sample piece. I want to make something of use. So I thought I was going to make this shawl. So I caked the yarn. And that's a lot of caking. I remember sort of every now and again walking around the dining room, which the Swift and the, the yarn caker, if that's a word, um, were attached to, kind of, you know, Straightening out the shoulder, that sort of thing. Um, so yes, it was a lot. Oh, it's 3,000 metres. Three kilometres. I don't often walk that far. Um, so I decided to put it into this cake. And then, of course, it sat in a cupboard. Then it sat in another cupboard. Then I moved house and it sat in another cupboard. Yeah, I have used a bit of it. I held it with some laced weight yarn uh, to make this shawl. But that was a very small proportion of the whole. This month I've been working on um, a cardigan which is made of various lace weight yarns, held doubled, held trebled or whatever. And one of the yarns I was kind of chain plying as I was working it. And I had another one to do like that. And there's no problem with that, but it's a little bit faffy. So I thought I'm just going to chain ply them on the wheel, make it a three ply. While I was there, I thought, why don't I do that with this? Now, I did initially have an idea of making this a four-ply. And what I was going to do was pull one strand from the centre, one strand from the outside, cake the two together, and then do the same thing again, one from the centre, one from the outside, so that I would have had four strands. However, it wasn't possible to find the strand in the middle of the cake. Another lesson learned. And another thing I tend to do more often now is when I'm caking yarn, the bit that's in the middle, I do a little slip knot and put a, um, like a light bulb stitch marker on it or something like that, or some kind of progress keeper, so that it's easy to find that 
thread. However, I hadn't done that in 2008 when I got this yarn. So I started to do that and that really wasn't working because there wasn't a thread to be pulled from the middle. There was, however, a thread to be pulled from the outside. So I thought, well, I will chain ply it and I'll have a three ply. I did toy with the idea of potentially, once I've got a cake of three ply, um, then putting the two ends of the cake into a ball to make that doubled so that we'd end up with a six ply yarn because this stuff is so fine a six ply yarn would not be that heavy this worked for a while and then it didn't and I just could not everything seemed to curl up on itself to not to tangle I could not get further than I've got with this little cake and by this point because this had taken a while and I'd been trying to untangle it and that sort of thing I thought what am I doing how much time am I spending on this and why am I spending this time yes it's a pretty colour but is it the best yarn I've ever had that's nice but what am I going to do with it it's going to be something for my neck and with what I've got I could make a nice scarf which I could then use for work and I could stop wasting my life. <laughs> Interestingly I then decided to cake up um, what I'd got on the bobbin, what I'd been chain plying on the wheel and even then and less than an hour after I'd done the chain plying it was catching round itself it had gone a bit tight in places and it was getting hard to even get off the bobbin so I thought I'm going to do this I'm going to start something straight away because otherwise this could sit in the cupboard for another 15 years and be completely useless as opposed to partially useless so with the cake I have, I have started crocheting a scarf. As you can see, it's very simple. Basically, this is a pattern. It's one of my kind of go-to easy crochet patterns that I don't have to think about. I have five trebles. This is all UK terminology, so that would be a double crochet in US terminology. So five trebles, miss the next two stitches, two trebles, two chain, two trebles, mix the, miss the next, mix the next, miss the next two stitches and repeat ending with a five trouble at the end so it's uh, a multiple of 10 plus five very simple works for me so this is now my car project because it's not something I need to carry a pattern around or think about and I'm just going to do this until I run out of yarn I suspect it will be a reasonable length um, I can't remember how many meters I've got here it's about 300 odd of the chained weight. So that should be enough to make a, a reasonable length scarf. That's what we're going with. Um, the rest is still in a tangle. And I was about to put it into the bin and then I remembered that, um, well, someone's parking next to me now. Well, they, no, they're going opposite. Then I remembered that there are people who really enjoy untangling yarn. They like the challenge of it. They like the, the sense of satisfaction when they pull out a long thread. And so if you are one of those people, email me. And I will, if you want it, you can have this. It's about 31 grams, which will come out to about... Um, what is it, about three metres a, um, a gram? So yeah, it'll come out to about 900 metres of something that's just slightly finer than sewing thread. <laughs> but if you would like it, you would be more than welcome to it. Um, so email me, the first person to email me. Oh, someone set their car alarm off. I hope that doesn't go off during my ceremony. It's probably because the man's dad is still in the car. 
However, um, <laughs> yes, so email me. I will get back in touch with you and ask for your postal address. And I will send it in the post to you, no matter where you are in the world. If you want this and you take it as you see it in this photograph, very tangled, you are more than welcome to it. I would completely understand if no one wanted this and thinking and was thinking, Les, why are you giving your rubbish away? Um, yeah, if no one wants it, that's absolutely fine. If I haven't heard from anyone uh, in a few weeks, I'll just bin it because uh, I don't know what else to do, <laughs> frankly. But it just, as well as watching um, knitting podcasts, although I am a little behind on those, I also quite enjoy watching a few minimalism, decluttering type podcasts. Yeah, I know. I know. If I was recording this in my room rather than in my car, that would be even more ridiculous than it is now. I think I'd watched a couple of those and I thought, why am I keeping this? It's not that I want it for a specific project. If I've had it for nearly 15 years and not used it, then there's probably a reason for that. So it is time to use it or let it go. So I'm using what I could save and I am offering slash binning, if no one wants it, what I couldn't. So. If you would like to take it off my hands, like I say, just email me. First person to email, I'll get back in touch. We'll sort out getting it to you. All, you know, postage at my expense, wherever you are in the world, I will be happy to do it with the thought that it is being used. But if no one wants it, then that makes sense to me as well. Cheers, everyone. Hello, lovelies. I have some yarn to show you. One that I made and two that I bought. I know I don't normally buy yarn. I have it given to me and I'm very grateful for that or I have it donated to me. But um, yes, so let's show you the, the one I made first. So I've been doing some spinning and this is fibre from Witchcrafty Lady. It's Superwash Polworth in the minty MT2 colourway and I decided to do a fractal spin. Now in hindsight this was probably too subtle a yarn colour to do that. Um, the idea of a fractal being that if you've got sort of blocks of colour in your fibre you split it and then you spin half of it with long colour changes the other half you split further and you have short colour changes so you have kind of intensity and low intensity colour going like this. I'm not quite sure what this means but you know what I mean. Um, so I did that with, with this and you can see hopefully that we've got some darker green here and some lighter green patches but because all of the colours in this are quite similar um, it is a very subtle fractal spin and subtle is unusual for me but we'll go with it um, so there were just over 100 grams of fibre I have got, I've written it all on here um, 340 metres of yarn it's 16 wraps per inch so it's a kind of fingering sport sort of weight being hand spun it's a little bit variable but I am very pleased with how it turned out. I hadn't spun for quite some time. I think the last time I spun was some fibre from Countess Ablaze, where I basically span, span? spun mud. Um, so that didn't go so well. But this I'm, I'm happy with. I've got some ideas of what I could use it for or what I could use it with. Um, we shall see. Now when I show you these two colours separately, you'll see that one and you'll see that one and they'll look quite similar. When you see them together, you can see they're actually different. Um, this is green, this is blue, but both in the kind of teal spectrum. This I bought and it's a long time since I bought some hand dyed yarn, but this is by Stranded, Podca um, Stranded Dye Works, Jude. 
and this is the Stranded Elf colourway. So this was the colourway that Jude launched at the end of June in memory of his mum, Mary, the lovely Stranded Elf, member of our knit group. So I couldn't not buy her colourway from Jude. Uh, this is the Merino Decay. I also bought some Merino Nylon, which was the prize for the first quarter. Um, that's gone on its way. That was a fingering weight. So bless him, Jude has dyed this for his mum. And these colours, definitely Mary's colours, and favourites of mine too. So it's a fabulous yarn. You've got sort of pale and dark teal. You've also got some greens in there, some sort of purples don't know what I'm going to do with this but couldn't not buy it not when I saw he was launching that yarn so the other yarn I bought I put in an order with Timu or as I'm calling it cheap crap from China and I'm not going to show everything I bought but I bought a sort of selection of things I bought some new drumsticks because I've lost one of my drumsticks how do you lose a drumstick? I don't know. Bought some sewing needles, um, a little storage rack for my office, that type of thing. But one thing I did buy was this yarn, which looks fairly uninteresting, but it's allegedly glow-in-the-dark yarn. Now, I was hoping, or I do hope, that when it glows in the dark, it will show more red than sort of baby pink. Time will out. Um, but I thought I'd give it a try and possibly make things to go on my drum kit. For those who have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm a member of a drumming group and particularly in the autumn months we do a lot of uh, nighttime processions and parades and we are lit up with lots of lights and sparkly things and a bit of glow in the dark some little bags to put the battery packs that the dry, uh, the lights go are lit from, powered by, that's the phrase. Um, seems like a good idea. So I will try a couple of these things. They may or may not glow in the dark. Time will out. With that um, skein finished of spun yarn, I have started spinning another. I'm on a spinning kick. I spin every day as I watch Barbara from The Flame and Fibre podcast she does a daily vlog it's somewhere between kind of eight and 20 minutes that sort of thing so perfect length to do a little bit of spinning every day and i have started spinning a bat which i haven't spun before i haven't spun from a bat before i mean um, obviously you can only spin it once as a rule if you try and spin it twice you end up with very curly yarn or something that comes completely unspun um i am going to do a classic three ply I'll show you a picture of the bat once I sort of unfolded it. So a lot of fabulous colours in here. Can't tell you anything about it because it was uh, a gift last Christmas, I think, from uh, a family member and there were no labels to show who the, the maker or the dyer was. So I can't tell you anything except that it's got fabulous colours in it and a variety of textures. There is some silk in here, there's some wool, uh, a few sparkly bits along the way. I was worried about the whole spinning mud thing again. So as I've been spinning it, I've been trying to kind of separate the colours for a period. And you can see in this bobbin, I've got a lot of the teal here, but I've got a fair bit of white at the top. I've got some green, um, some of the purples and reds. So I was, as I was spinning this, I wasn't sure what to do. And I thought, well, I have two choices. I like a three-ply yarn. And also, this single is coming up very fine. And if they all do that, um, I'm going to be back on the lace weight again, <laughs> which I didn't want. So I wanted to do a three-ply yarn. And as I was getting towards the end of this first third of the bat, I thought, well, I have two choices. I can either spin separate bobbins and then ply them together and see how the colours play. Or I can spin the whole bobbin, uh, the whole fibre onto one bobbin and chain ply it, which would have the advantage of intensifying the colour because all this teal, for example, if you chain ply it, you would keep it all together. So you'd end up with more um, of a stripe when you knit it rather than a, 
a mixture. I have decided to go with the classic three ply. I don't think I'm going to get mud. I might get very mottled looking yarn when I crochet or knit with it, but uh, mottled within these lovely colours rather than the overall yarn looking a bit muddy as it did with my uh, earlier attempts. So that's what I'm doing. So I've finished the first bobbin, started the second, and like I say, I'm doing kind of 10, 15 minutes spinning a day, which is a, an amount that, that works well for me. It kind of keeps my hand in without feeling that I'm over committing to, to anything. So. so those are yarns. Yes, I have bought yarn for the first time in a long time. I know I've bought it with sort of birthday money before and that sort of thing, but this is actually just bought some yarn because it was there. Oh dear, how sad, what a shame. Right, well I've just had to change the battery in the camera. I warmed my hands, hopefully you didn't feel a thing. Um, I've got one more thing to show you in this room and then I'll record a roundup of whips. Not that that will take long this month and you'll see why when I go through them, but um, that's that's what we're doing. So the cardigan I showed you earlier, I had used as the project that I do when I'm sitting at my desk, checking things on my screen, reading them aloud to make sure they sound okay. And having completed that project, I wanted to start another and I have decided to make another panel jacket. And as you can see, it's red and grey because red is a colour I like. Um, so this will take ages. I'm not going to show you it every month because it will just be bits. But this is the centre back panel and it's an ideal project for checking screen watching something, reading something, because it is just stocking stitch back and forth for 200 odd rows. So this will be a panel jacket in assorted shades of red and red adjacent colours, I think, um, with a grey border. So that's that from this room, but I will then put that there. Um, I will round up my whips and that will be everything. Cheers. Hello lovelies. So here is the round up of whips such as it is and I say that because I've mostly been concentrating on one project. I have started a test knit for Jacqueline Sislak. It's called the Chroma Pullover um, she's asked that we don't use her photographs at the moment. Obviously, they'll be part of the pattern launch. So I'll just show you my work in progress. And it looks enormous because it is in a good, squishy, cuddly kind of way. It's an oversized pullover. It'll be colour blocked and it has some short row shaping to make it slightly dipped at the back hem. So I'm currently trying to work out where the beginning of my row is and I haven't got a clue. Um, so this is where I've got so far. Um, this is the same red yarn that I used recently in my many shades of red sweater when I did the floof uh, in lots of different red DK weights. So that's what I'm using here. Um, it's actually a pattern for a worsted weight yarn, but because that's not a UK standard, I'm using double knitting weight instead. I'm making a lot of noise. So the other colours, there are two versions that she's designed, um, a two colour version and a four colour. Obviously I'm doing the four colour because, you know, I'm not going to have enough of any yarn to do half a sweater, am I? So my kind of main colour is this, which is a sort of fawn beige, this is a Rowan yarn. That is, the red is James C. Brett Legacy. This is Rowan Pure Life, I think. Yep, yeah, Pure Life. And um, it says shade 602 Ivy. I don't know in what universe that is Ivy, but um, that's what it's being called. And I'm assuming it was the right label on the right yarn. I have a, a pack of it that I got at a, a yarn show some time ago. The Legacy, the red, is in the claret colourway. 
So I need two other colours, smaller quantities for parts of the sweater. And I have decided to reuse some yarn on a project that I'd started that I just hadn't done anything with. These were the Harmony mittens, which I'll show you a picture of here. They're a crochet pattern. It's quite um, a slow, quite an involved pattern. I will go back to it, just not had my head in the right place recently. And I think I just wasn't feeling like making mittens in the middle of summer, so I didn't. I was using this Manostel Uruguay silk blend. And I think I've got a colorway here as well. It's just a number, which is 6828. Or it might be 6461. Because I had another one of these in red, which I used in my other sweater. So I'm not sure which is which, but whatever colour that is, <laughs> it's not showing up terribly well in this light. It's looking quite blue on my camera screen, but it's a sort of dark grey and there's some orange and some dusky pinks in there. And I need to find one other colour and I haven't yet decided I'm torn between black or orange. So again, it's going by um, the colours that I have in my stash. Plenty thereof, obviously, but I want ones that will go nicely with these two and now with this one. Because this has got orange in it, I'm thinking of orange. The only thing that's putting me off black is it's going to feel like a big sort of black hole of contrast, I think. But I think the orange may be too bright an orange. So we're going to see how we go. Um, but that's what we've got so far. So as I say, this is what I've mainly been working on. It's um, a test knit, so there's a deadline, which I think is the 23rd of August. Don't anticipate any problems in getting it finished, but it does mean I'm working fairly monogamously on that project. So just to show you a couple of others that were are still kind of in the pipeline, including, because this has changed since I saw you last, this is the Penguono by Stephen West, and I'm doing this as a, a sensible scrappy project, if there isn't a contradiction in terms. So I th think last time you saw it, if my stitch mark is in the right place, it was there, so it was on this main piece, I've done some side pieces since. I'm using a grey yarn. The reason why it's a sensible stash buster is I'm using a grey yarn to tie everything together. So there's either one or two strands of grey with whatever else I'm using. So that will hopefully bring everything slightly, it'll kind of mute everything, just bring it down slightly. Because otherwise we've got sparkly purple there and we've got green and pink there. So um, yeah, that one's cheery. <laughs> the other project uh, was my car project but as you saw earlier in the podcast um, I've got that lace weight scarf as my car project. This is the crochet boxy so this is uh, a pattern that I've I've rewritten the Hohi Locatelli original so I've I've sort of reverse engineered it and this is what we've got so far. So again, oversized, but that's okay. This yarn is Dennis Brunton Designer Yarns Magicolor. And uh, viewers who've been around a little while will remember that last year, um, a friend of mine, her aunt sadly died and she'd been a keen machine knitter. So there were lots of cones of yarn up for grabs. And unsurprisingly, I saw this and thought, oh yes, please. And the way the colours are coming out, I'm liking. Again, it's not too kind of bright. It's quite muted because, of, because everything is a dark brown and then plied with a variegated yarn. So we're getting multi-colours, but it is not too bright. It's quite muted. Um, so that's the Crochet Boxy. Um, not working on this one at the moment, but I will be soon. And getting back to that, I need to compare it to my previous crochet boxy to see how many rows I need to do before I start 
splitting for the sleeves. I think that's probably it. Um, sorry, I turned away from you there. That was very rude of me. I think that's probably it on the works in progress because I'm putting so much attention on the test knit. Which hopefully means I'll have an FO again next month and you'll see that finished sweater. Um, I think I'm able to promote it. I may have to wait for the designers say so. In which case, the August podcast will probably be very short. Yay, they all cry. Um, but this is kind of where we're at at the moment. So that's all the knitting and crochet and spinning and all of that. So there we are. This month ahead, August... I'm taking some time off work. Um, I'm going to be Nurse Les. Be afraid. <laughs> be very afraid. Oh! Uh, our hospital patient, having been in hospital since before Christmas, is due home during August. And because they've been away for such a long time, um, it seems a good idea to go and stay with them to kind of get them back into home life. And there are still things that they need help with. So... I've put myself forward for the first week and then we'll go from there and see how they're doing. So, and then the phone rang. So the phone rang, then himself came home from the dog walk, then we had dinner and then it was the evening and I stopped recording. So it's the next morning. Hello. <laughs> I look very pink. Oh well. Um, where was I? Just rounding up what the next month holds. My niece and great niece are coming to visit and uh, we're going to have a few days doing stuff that a two and a half year old likes hopefully so that should be fun just hope the weather stays dry for that we've had a lot of rain this week so dry weather for that would would be good apart from that more of the same i think so more crafting hopefully and yep yeah, just making pretty things with a bit of luck I hope you're all okay I hope you're having fun with whatever you do I hope you have time to do the things that you really love and to be with the people you want to be with uh, thanks again to everyone who's taking part in the make along some really great things in the thread some people are making Christmas presents already good for you <laughs> and yeah, if you're looking for inspiration of what your next project may be, the thread might be a good place to start. There are some lovely items on there. That's it for July. See you at the end of August. Um, see you Fridays uh, if you watch the vlogs. Some of those may be coming from a different address this week, this month, uh, with, with a bit of luck. And I hope everyone stays well. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.